Hey, I'm Johnny Wilson, and welcome to the August edition of the Top 5 Questions that were submitted to the ePlan Solutions Center. How can I draw a structure box with a recess? So I've got two structure boxes. The one on the left shows the designation in the structure box uh, recessed with 90 degrees here. So how do I make the one on the right look like the same? So we need to check some settings first. So if we go to the options and then settings, and then we're just going to go to the project and then the name of the project. And then in graphical editing under the general tab, we want to make sure the draw structure box with the recess is checked. So once that is done, then I just double click on the structure box and then I change the value from the left top outside at zero degrees to the left top inside at 90 degrees like so. So if I click OK, then you can see that this now matches up. To make this setting apply for all the new structure boxes I inserted, I can just double click on it and I can just toggle one of the values. So I like to just change this from bold and then uncheck it. And you can see that now I can save this. So I'm going to give it a new name. So I'm going to call it demo default here. And then if I use it as default from now on and click OK, and if it already exists, you can overwrite it like so. If I click OK, then I can insert a new structure box. I'm just going to give it the same name. So I'm going to call it skid and click OK. So you can now see that this one inserts like the other ones do. How can I create a macro project? So to create a macro project, the easiest way is to take a copy of the project you are working on. So here I'm going to go project and then copy. And then I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call this top five macros. And then I'm just going to go for only interactive pages and then click OK. And now I've got a copy of the project. The only thing I need to change to make this into a macro project is to right click and go to properties and change the type of project from schematic to macro project. When I insert an accessory in Pro Panel, how do I change the orientation? So I'm going to drag this terminal cover in here and snap it to the top. And you can see that the rotation of this accessory is correct. Uh, if I try and place it on the bottom, you can see that it does not rotate as expected. So you can manually rotate this by pressing Control, Shift and R and press it again to get it upside down. And then when I place it, you can see it's going to snap there correctly. Um, we can make an adjustment to this macro, so it will always uh, place the accessory in the correct orientation. So to do this, what I can do is I can cut this device from the cabinet and it's going to ask me for a base point. I'm just going to use this one here. And then if I jump to my macro project, which I've got open here, I can go into this new layout space I have created and then just paste it. So it's going to ask me for a base point. It doesn't matter where this is. I'm just going to place it here. And then in the macro project, it's going to show me all the different mounting points on this device. And I can see this bottom one is the one I want to work with. And I can see that the Z axis is pointing up and away from the device. And then the Y axis goes up and this one Z, the X axis goes to the right. So to rotate this, we can just click on the mounting point and go to edit graphic and then rotate around axis. So the axis I wanted to rotate around is the Z axis. So I'm just going to click this one here and type 180 degrees. So once I do that, you can see the Y axis is now pointing down. So when I insert the accessory, it will be placed um, in the downwards orientation. So once I've done that, I can right click and go on properties and I'm just going to grab the macro name here. So I'm just going to select it all and copy. And then I'm going to go to this new layout space and go to properties down here. I'm just going to paste it in the macro name here. So I'm going to paste the name here also. And this is just because I like to organize it by the actual file name. So I'm going to hit OK. And then once I've done that, I can regenerate this macro. So I can go to project data, macros, generate automatically. Make sure you've got the overwrite existing macro box checked and click OK. So now when I go back to my demo project and I place that same device. So if I go to devices, mine was MCB 109. I can drag that over like so. And it, now when I place that terminal cover, I can see that it snaps correctly here and also here. So I don't need to manually rotate it now in the future.
I've made changes to a macro, but when I insert the macro, I do not see these changes. I have a simple macro here, and I'm just going to regenerate it by going to Project Data, Macros, and Generate Automatically. Notice this is variant A. I'm going to go to my schematic project and insert this macro, and then place it here. I'm going to update this macro by taking a copy of it, and then I'm going to paste it below here. I'm going to make a simple modification to it. I'm going to make it two lights and wire these ones up here, like so. I'm going to change the variant to variant B. And then I'm going to regenerate variant B. When I insert this new macro, I should have the options of variant A and variant B, but notice how variant B does not have the additional light. So what is going on? So if I go back to my macro project, I can click on the macro box and right click and go to select associated objects. As you see, only this first circuit is highlighted. So that is what is included in the macro box. We have a few options to correct this. One way is to select everything inside the macro box like so and then right click on the macro box and go to assign objects to macro box. So now when I right click on the macro box and go to select associated objects, you can see everything is highlighted. We can also do it a different way. So if I go back a step and change this back to B, and I do my select associated objects again, I'm back to my previous step. So another option is to double click on the macro box and to change this set in here. So manual object assignment, if I uncheck that, ePlan will automatically include everything that is inside the macro box. So if I go to select associated objects here, everything is now included. So I can regenerate variant B by going to project data, macros, generate automatically. Okay, so now when I reinsert the macro, it should be functioning as I expect. So here's variant A and there is variant B. When I insert a macro with a placeholder object, how can I delete or hide these? So here I have a macro that I inserted from the data pole. It came with two placeholder objects that I can use to adjust certain values on this macro. Sometimes it's desirable to hide these. Um, and to do that, the easiest way is to change the layer visibility. So to do that, let's go to the project data and then layer management. And the two layers that we're interested in is the macro layer here, so ePlan 322 and the placeholder object. So if I just scroll across to the right here and uncheck the visibility, and then also the property placement for the placeholder object down here, and this is ePlan 551, and I just scroll across and change the visibility, and then I can close out there, and as you can see, they now turn gray. And if I go to view and then turn off invisible elements, now they are hidden.